Children's museums obviously vary enormously throughout the world. They have different resources, um, different kinds of focuses, working with different kinds of communities. You know, of course, they must reflect their local environment. But I think that there are some common techniques which are very familiar. Most children's museums would probably um, be identifiable through these kinds of uh, practices. And I've pulled out, I think, what are the three key ways in which children's museums, and again, we might want to think about children's programming more generally, three key techniques that um, they have in common. First one is learning through play. And I say I'll talk quite a lot more about that and some of the ideas underpinning it, what it means, how it works, how it's supposed to work, some of the problems with it. Interactivity, which I think is a, a word we use so much, don't we, at the moment, in our work around museums. Again, I think it raises questions. Does you know, being hands-on necessarily mean being minds-on, as they say? You know, are we in danger sometimes of creating a lot of activity which sort of lacks a purpose that somehow um, doesn't always achieve what it sets out to. So again, some interesting questions around that. And I think the children's museums are often a space as well where there's quite a lot of live, I've said live interpretation, performance. What I mean there is storytelling, narrative-based work, sometimes using actors, sometimes using museum staff, but a space of, of dialogue, a, sta a space of storytelling, a space really where imagination is allowed to, uh, um, imaginative um, activity is allowed to take place often with another um, adult or other kind of you know, human interactor. Uh, so we'll talk about all three of those, of, those, of those techniques. And indeed, if anybody wants to add any more um, into the mix, we can, we can certainly do that as well. What are the sort of underpinning educational philosophies here? Why is it that these techniques have developed within the children's museum movement and you know become so widespread? They have a you know they have a strong currency within the movement. Now, please don't be um, put off by this ghastly list of rather uh, uh, pompous sounding uh, uh, theories. I'm going to talk a little bit about them. And, and unpack them. But I think it's interesting, and again, I think this is the, these are ideas which have a resonance beyond children's museums as such to make us think about how we communicate and how people respond to and learn in museums more generally. So th these are some important educational philosophies. The first one, constructivist learning. Um, as uh, um, discussed by the Swiss educationist Jean Piaget and specifically for museums, um, the American educationist George Hine. I'll talk more about constructivist learning, but just in brief, it's the idea that um, instead of being passive learners, instead of having kind of empty minds which can, which can be filled with knowledge, we are all active learners, and that is how we learn. We bring our own experiences to any learning activity, and it's through, in a sense, an accommodation of our existing experience and that new activity that we actually carry on and learn. So it's, we make meaning through what we bring to any learning environment and, in turn, take forward new knowledge and understanding on that basis.